Hi. Hey, I'm Mike. Uh, just wanted to take you through what a Rotan, what a Rocon is all about. Uh, we just took delivery of our Rocons here just within the last couple days, and uh, before we get them out in the mud and get them uh, too dirty, we wanted to show you exactly how this thing works. So, um, great vehicle. I've got uh, just a little bit of time on it so far, just riding it around by my house, and uh, very excited to own one. and. I'll just take you through kind of the basics of what a Rokon is all about. Um, <clears throat> obviously, as you can see, it's a two-passenger vehicle. Uh, I have the optional game carrier, so I can take this seat off. It's four bolts, and I can put the game carrier on there. That way I can run my tree stand out into the woods with me, that kind of thing. I uh, also have the optional soft trailer hitch, is what they call the soft hitch, because this has the chain which allows the hitch to pivot here. If you're going over logs or anything like that, it's not going to get hung up. It's got some give to it. And you can put uh, one and seven eighths or a two inch ball in there, whatever. Pull a trailer, pull a yard cart, or whatever you want to do with it. So, um, passenger pegs here for passenger if you're hauling somebody with you. And uh, we'll start up here by the handlebars. I got the optional uh, brush busters on here, which I would recommend for anybody. Uh, that's going to keep your hands free of getting smashed into trees, bushes, or whatever because uh, believe me, when you get on one of these things and see the power and traction that they have, you're going to want to take these things anywhere. A um, <clears throat> couple updates uh, that we've got since the original Rokon back in uh, 1959 was first put together. Uh, we have an upgrade here on the motor. This is a 6.6 .6 horsepower Kohler engine, a lot of torque, a lot of power. And this replaces a two-cycle motor that was on the original Rokon, the uh, Super B 146cc two-stroke motor that they had. Air intake is right here. Uh, the top part of it here is where the air actually goes in, so it gives you about 24 inches of uh, fordability as far as crossing water, mud, those kinds of things. And then uh, also, going back to the handlebars here a second, hydraulic brakes front and rear, which is a nice feature because that allows you to uh, have instant control over stopping. Um, and the nice thing about braking on a Rokon in general is that this is where the disc brake is located up here. The front is actually attached right to the miter box, which is your gearbox that turns your front wheel. And when we turn the bike around here, you'll see the chain and so forth on the other side. And the drive shaft is running through this main tube underneath the gas tank here, back down to the transmission, which we'll show you when we turn the bike around also. Uh, so it's high and dry, it's out of the dirt, um, and unless you're going in water that's very deep, it's never gonna get moisture and stuff on it except from the weather, the environment that you're riding in. So, um, the other thing about the update, this is probably one of the more significant updates since the uh, change of the motor, but we have the auto grab suspension, which uh, adds a little bit of weight to the bike overall, but you're, it's really kind of a good place to have some extra weight because you want, a little, um, you want that front wheel traction when you're uh, climbing uh, steep inclines and so forth. Uh, it also gives you eight inches of travel on the suspension in the front here and it gives you quite a few adjustments as far as stiffness so you can adjust that to whatever your ride situation is. If you're carrying a heavy load you want a little bit stiffer or if you're just on the bike by yourself you can just have it in its softest position which I've got it in right now. Um, the <coughs> foot pegs here um, haven't changed much since the original. Basically when you're going over an obstacle especially a log or something like that these will flip up so that they don't get hung up on you you go over top the log and your foot pressure just pushes it right back into position. So a uh, very nice feature there as well. And as you can see, uh, chain drive uh, coming out of the transmission here over to the real we rear wheel on this side. We also have a um, pretty cushy seat. It's got a shock and a spring underneath it here and that shock is also adjustable just like this front shock is. So you can stiffen the seat as well to your um, to your liking so that way uh, you can get the comfort that you're looking for in this machine also. Um, I've got the Trailbreaker model as you can see here which is uh, their best model 
And uh, the other nice thing about the trail breaker is the aluminum hollow hubs. Uh, I, I really went for that for a number of reasons. They're very lightweight. The spoke wheels add about 20 pounds to uh, the bike overall. And uh, with these aluminum wheels, you get the, the ability to carry either gasoline or water if you're going on an extended trip out into a wilderness area. So you've got some fresh water with you and some additional fuel. Uh, the other nice thing about them is if you don't have any liquid in them, uh, the buoyancy that you receive from these, you can actually float these bikes walk them right through uh, water if it's deeper than you can ride through and uh, which would be great for ice fishing also because uh, these things uh, will actually float and they will float like a, a person along with them so if you did go through the ice uh, your bike will remain on on top the surface of the water you are not have to go fishing down uh, for that once you're rescued so uh, you can hang on to it and the buoyancy will keep you afloat as well um, Shift levers right here. This is a plunger transmission, and I'll show you the transmission when we get to the other side. But uh, very simple, very effective transmission, and that's one thing that you'll find with a the Rokon. They've been designed with reliability in mind, simplicity. They don't complicate anything. Everything works well on them. Uh, it's not a synchronized transmission, so you have to stop to change gears. But when you're in the lowest speed, you're just crawling anywhere, anyway, through thick stuff up to 10 miles an hour. Um, it's in neutral when it's all the way out. You push it in to engage first gear. You have neutral again. You push it in a little bit further to engage second gear. And then you have neutral again, and you push it all the way in to engage third gear. And uh, first gear is good for, like I said, up to about 10 miles an hour. You're going to be able to do about 20 in second, uh, 0 to 20, and then 0 to 30 in third gear if, if you're on a two-track or you're going down the side of a road or something and you want to make some time. Um, but that's uh, basically the, the shift point right there. It stays hidden behind all this so it doesn't get hung up on anything. The older models had the shift on the tank here. Uh, I've never driven an older model so I don't know how that compares but I would think that this would be superior as far as positioning and so forth. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is turn, the, turn it around and we're going to give you a look at the other side. Very lightweight also, uh, you can pick these things up and just put them wherever you want to go. Um, one nice thing about it is it's, it's very well balanced and very maneuverable as far as just picking the back end up and, and throwing it around. Let me get the bike back up here. You can see the big, the large kickstand. Uh, you don't have to lay the bike down or put it up against a tree or whatever. The kickstand uh, does definitely does a very nice job there. And as you can see, you've got the rear brake, the disc here for the rear brake right there. So here again, it's high and dry. It's going to be higher than any water that you're going to be fording. And I'm just going to remove these bolts. I previously loosened them up a little bit so that they would just come off. We'll take the side cover off. We'll show you the other side of the motor here. But that just comes right off. It's a fiberglass cover so it's very durable. And what you've got here is a Salisbury style. Um, it's similar to what a snowmobile clutch would look like. You've got your belt drive here that goes to your secondary. So that too is, is very simple. It's enclosed in that so it keeps debris, sticks and that kind of thing up out of there so it's going to be um, it's going to be very effective as well. Um, <clears throat> you got your transmission here where your, your secondary is bolted to and you can't really see it all that well. But one thing about um, all the parts on this bike pretty much except for like the engine it's all manufactured right at the, the uh, Rocon plant up in Rochester, New Hampshire. So they have complete control of quality. They're assembling the clutches, they build the transmissions, they build the miter box up here, which is your gear that comes off your drive shaft that goes down and drives your chain. And with the uh, auto grab suspension, you've got double chain. If you don't have the auto grab suspension, you just have a single chain that comes down to your sprocket here. Um, the other thing too, and I don't know if you can see it, but you've got a, a coupler right here. A universal joint is made out of billeted aluminum. It's made right at uh, the plant there in Rochester. And one nice thing about this too is that uh, when you get to a certain angle, probably about like this, 
about a 45 degree angle it disengages the front wheel so that you don't have wheel scrubbing going on when you're turning on a flat surface or a paved surface or something like that which makes it very easy to control that front end you don't have that uh, scrubbing action going on and the way that it does it is right here there's a slip clutch right in the, um, in the drive shaft housing here and as soon as this front end gets cocked, the uh, steering gets cocked here a little bit, that slip clutch releases and allows that wheel to, uh, in the front to be freewheeling. As soon as you pull it back into uh, in a line position like this, the tension on that clutch um, goes back together and it re-engages that clutch which re-engages your front drive. And it's seamless, you never know what's happening. You don't feel it, uh, it just goes in and out. You turn, you come back in like this and you're you're back in uh, two-wheel drive again. Uh, as you can see, the engine is very compact. The cylinder here is laying uh, fairly horizontal there, which makes it easy to, to uh, get this engine into the compartment here. Um, the frame, everything about this bike, the frames are made right at the plant there, so they've got complete control of quality. Very lightweight overall. The bike with the autograph suspension, this particular bike weighs 220 pounds. Uh, compared to my Harley, it's it's very light. So, uh, <clears throat> but then um, coming to the rear here, obviously you can see the steel fenders. These are plastic. They have the rubber mud guards on them here, just to keep the engine or yeah, to keep the engine compartment and so forth clean. And uh, very very heavy duty from the standpoint of you know sticks and stuff going up against them. They're not get off bent out of shape or whatever. Um, Wheels are also manufactured right there at Rochester, New Hampshire. Uh, they weld them up right there. You got a fill plug right here um, <coughs> with an O-ring behind that to keep that nice and uh, tight there, so that moisture can't get out, can't get in. And if you've got liquid or anything in there, obviously it's not going to leak out. Here's your adjustment for your tires, low pressure tires. Uh, I opted for the wider tire. This particular bike has a 12-inch rims. With the 8 inch wide tire, another option that you can get is the 15 inch rim with a 6 inch tire. And uh, I just feel that this is a better tire combination. It's the most popular one that uh, Rokon sells. And one advantage over these tires that these tires have over the 6 inch tire is you get, they've got tread design that comes up on the side here for so side hilling, those kinds of things. You're going to be uh, in a lot better shape. The other one is more of an implement and has more of the tread just in the face of the tire. It doesn't have the wraparound tread design like this. Um, it's got a very sturdy rack up front here. You can probably put about as much weight as you think you can haul on that. And then um, also the headlight. It's just an on-off situation so if you don't want the light on you just have a handlebar toggle switch here that you can turn it off or you can have it on. Uh, to kill the motor once it's running, all you do is just hit the kill switch. There's no ignition on this particular bike. You can order it with a key ignition. I opted not to just because it just adds complexity. The more switches, the more wires you have. I don't want something, um, you know, getting a stick up in it and pulling it out of place or whatever when I'm in the all back trying to get back uh, to my tree stand and that kind of thing. So it's just a kill switch. Once it's killed, it just releases itself, so you're ready to start it up again. You don't have to remember to activate the switch in an on and off position. So you can see everything about the bike, once again, is, uh, is, is built for simplicity. And, uh, yeah, they just keep it basic. They keep it simple. And even though there's been improvements made over the years, uh, this basic bike is still very similar to the ones that were produced over 50 years ago. And... Um, they call it a moto tractor, and truly, when you get on this and you ride it, uh, you don't think of it as a motorcycle. You truly will be thinking of, of it as a tractor. It's just got tremendous pulling power, uh, traction that's just unbelievable for a two-wheel vehicle. And, um, yeah, you can uh, just really see that uh, the design work that's been uh, put into the Rokon over the years, the tweaking that's been done, uh, you know, they just continue to improve on, on a great basic design that they started with. And like I said, the, uh, the improvements of the upgrade to the four cycle 6.6 .6 horsepower motor, the autograph suspension, and those kinds of things have just uh, kept uh, 
Rocon at the forefront and pretty much uh, in a class of its own as far as 